What is good everybody, today we are taking a look at the WWE Elite Series 110 Rhea Ripley and Pete Dunne. I know it says Butch, but that character never existed to me. It's dead, alright? It's Pete Dunne, it's always been Pete Dunne. Always been a big Pete Dunne guy. Always loved Rhea Ripley as well, so this should be fun. I've been waiting on this Rhea Ripley figure for a very long time, and an updated Pete Dunne is huge. Haven't seen him since Elite 75, and we haven't seen Rhea Ripley since Elite 102, which wasn't that long ago, but in comparison, that figure was trash. So today we finally have some upgrades to Rhea Ripley. We've been been waiting on for a very long time. We got the epic white gear in here to complete our judgment day. Not completely, but sort of. No, let's man, I'm excited for this review. It should be a fun one. Let's take a look at both figures here. There is a shot of Rhea Ripley looking pretty damn good there. You got mommy on the side right there. You got mommy on the side over there. And then, of course, you do have her holding up the championship there on the back. I know it's kind of outdated at the moment, but this is before the new world championship, which I'm sure we'll probably get in some sort. I, I really don't know how we don't have an ultimate edition of Rhea Ripley just yet. Hopefully at San Diego Comic-Con, we'll see one. We're getting Dominic Mysterio. We're getting Damian Priest. So obviously, I would imagine that Rhea Ripley has to be coming around the corner. But there is Pete Dunne, man, looking damn good. There are some things about these figures that I'm worried about, which we'll get into as we unpack them. But it is your standard WWE Elite packaging, as you can see here. Not the most exciting packaging ever, but it is just your mainline standard WWE Elite packaging here from Mattel. But with that all being said, man, I think it is time to finally crack these two figures out of the packaging. Find out what they're all about. But before we do... So, if you guys want to grab these figures, you can do so over at Ringside Collectibles. Use promo code MDTOYS. Save yourselves 10% over there. I greatly appreciate it. Should be a good one, man. But head over to Ringside Collectibles. Pick up some figures. Any figures you'd like. Go check them out. Appreciate them as always. But, now that we've covered that, let's crack these guys out of the packaging. Find out what they're all about. And see how they fit into our WWE action figure collections. So here's Pete Dunne and Rhea Ripley out of the packaging, looking pretty damn good right here. Both of them in white, which I always love, man. You know, I love white gears over here, man. I feel like that hasn't been stated on the channel in a very long time. Haven't talked about, you know, different white gears and different things like this. And, you know, we don't really get a lot of white attires in the WWE Elite line, so getting two in the same line right here looks pretty damn good. I'm excited for both of these figures. Was hype for them when they were first announced. Been waiting on a good Rhea Ripley for a very long time, and an updated Pete Dunne with double-jointed arms. So this review is all for me, all right? I'm going to be honest there, I have been looking forward to these two for a very long time. So it should be fun, man. What we're going to do is dive into Rhea Ripley's accessories and Rhea Ripley, and then we will run it back and take a closer look at Pete Dunne's accessories and Pete Dunne and find out all the comparisons, man. So to get into all that, let's shut the hell up and dive into Rhea Ripley's accessories. So getting into Rhea Ripley's accessories, we get a championship, which marks the third figure already in this set that has a championship belt. So I know my belt collectors are going to be nice and happy. But we do have the more accurate sized SmackDown Women's Championship, which is ceasing to exist now, but it is still cool to see, and it looks really good. I think this may be the best painted Women's Championship I've seen, and we do have the Rhea Ripley side plate, so that is a cool and nice adjustment. Never seen that before in the line. I think getting these details in the line is so awesome because it just really creates that sense of realism when you get the accurately sized championships, but this is a nice accessory. Always glad to include a championship. I think the main thing I'd like to see now is the clip at the end. Not just painted on, but a nice sculpted on clip, you know, the belt clip would be nice to add to championships. And then outside of that, you do get the mic holding hand. She does have her tattoo details on there. No nail polish. I don't know if that's accurate or not, but we do have Rhea Ripley mic holding hands. And then it wouldn't be Rhea Ripley without fists because, you know, she's got to have fists to beat the hell out of people. So getting into Rhea Ripley at the top of the head sculpt, we do have this brand new head sculpt here that I think looks pretty good. It certainly looks better than that last one. My God, I was so tired of that same last one. She had the same head sculpt, that same haircut forever. I know her hair's longer now. She's not on TV at this current moment, but this is a great place holder until we get an Ultimate Edition, until we get her back, but I would love to see, on the Ultimate Edition, I hope that we get like a tongue out head sculpt, a pissed off head sculpt, maybe that smirking head sculpt. I think that would really work well for Rhea Ripley, and hopefully that will be the case, but she does have her gauges in there. She has her lipstick. You get the nose piercing. You even get the JD right there for the Judgment Day underneath her left eye, which I think is nice. I think the choker necklace with the mommy on it is very excellent as well. You can see that underneath the neck there, which I think is great. You do have the white gear going down. One thing I wish that they would have been included on this figure, and I know it's not this specific attire, so you can't really do anything about it. While I love the white gear, I would love to see an attire or a figure, and hopefully on the Ultimate Edition this will happen, where her sternum tattoo can be seen. So she'll have the sternum tattoo, maybe some cloth goods, and then you'll see all of her tattoos on her arms, all of her tattoos on her legs. That's what I'm looking forward to on her next figure. But the white, silver, purple, and black looks really damn good. A great attire, all of her tattoos on her arms. These new, this new upper torso and these new arms just look so good for Rhea Ripley because it captures, you know, that stature of her and how muscular she is. 
much like China or in the same vein as China, it totally adds to the realism, man. They made her way too small before, and they made her too small. I only have the Elite 84 really to compare because I broke down my Elite 102 figure, but this is a really great job. I like the little apparatus here that wraps around her legs. She does have Dom Dom on the butt there. You got the purple paneling going on right there. You got the netting going around with all the tattoos underneath. That's a very impressive how they're able to layer the netting over the tattoos. I think that looks good. Got a little schmutz right here on my shin. The shin of my rear Ripley, there is a little bit of schmutz or paint rub. I will have to hit that with some white paint. Not the biggest deal there. And then she does have the same exact boot mold, but they're molded, molded in white, which looks really clean. I like this. I like They're great boots, so th those are great. And then she does have the white wrist tape, but it's such a breath of fresh air to not have a rear Ripley that's super tiny. But her diaphragm is decent. You know, women's figures don't have the best ab crunch, unfortunately, but she can still pose around well. The arms feel good in hand, you know, the rotation and everything. I'm not having any of that stiff shoulder syndrome going on. All of that looks really good. You do get waist swivel and you get a little bit of diaphragm pivoting over here as well. She does have the splits, but uh, this crotch piece with the with these legs does kind of limit her articulation. Her kick forward is a little bit like that, but you can see the way she stands, she can't really put her legs together because of this apparatus coming down and then the leg mold that is used, which isn't the biggest deal ever. I just think that it, I don't know, it, it kind of looks unnatural, but at the same time, it's not the biggest deal. I don't think that, you know, you're going to have her standing like that. I think that this, you know, normal standing pose is plenty enough, I think, but double jointed knee feels good. The thigh swivel feels good. None of it feels overly tight, which is always nice, but let's get into some rear Ripley figure comparisons over here and the first comparison that I want to do. So here's a comparison between our different rear Ripley's. I can finally retire this god-awful custom that I was working on. For a long time they made her way too small. They didn't really capture her broadness or how muscular she is. So they had her on this tiny body frame and then I tried to use a Raquel figure to kind of fix that but then it led to this giraffe neck atrocity that everybody always clowned on which for you know it's pretty rightful. But I kind of made like this makeshift black attire updated rear Ripley because I didn't like the Elite 102 but I do want to see if, you know, we do have the, like, I did put the choker necklace and different things on here. I want to pop this head sculpt off and put it over here and just see if this will sit correctly. Let's see how this looks right here. And that doesn't look half bad, really. It's, the head certainly sits better, so that may be something if I got another Elite 110, maybe I could customize this one and make it look better. That actually doesn't look half bad, so maybe, I don't know, maybe we can play around with that. Let's see if this fits onto the Elite 110, though. Make sure I don't lose that necklace right there, because you definitely don't want to do that, but if you pop this on to here. Yeah, a little bit of a giraffe neck. Not horrific, but certainly not something. I think I would keep this head sculpt on there, but it's still a little bit of a giraffe neck. It's just the way the head sculpt was made. This head sculpt was definitely made for a more broader body. And that actually, looking at that, I may have to pick up another Elite 110 because I think I could customize this and make another makeshift Rhea Ripley. I know the arms and stature and everything won't be the exact same, but it's pretty close. I mean, the arms are a little bit different, but the shoulders and everything are very similar, and that's kind of what I was going for. So I think I could get away with that. But yeah, we can finally get rid of that terrible head sculpt. I think the head sculpt is what really held that figure back. So now getting this new head sculpt, I think, will be much, much better. And we can customize that and finish that custom because that was the whole point of it. But there is your rear Ripley figure comparison. So here's the Elite 84. Again, I don't have the Elite 102. I just hated the figure so much. I think this fit rear Ripley for the time, this rear Ripley Elite 84 figure. And I enjoyed this figure. So there's your comparison there between these two. And then for your rear Ripley Judgment Day comparison, we do have my Fix Up Dominic Mysterio over here from Elite 105 combining the Elite 109 together with it. We have the Elite 110 Rhea. We have my Fix Up Elite 107 Finn Balor. And then we have the Elite 109 Damian Priest. And all of these look really good up next to each other. I know that the Dominic's not the stock Dominic and the Finn is not the stock Finn, but for the most part, this is about what we got, man. You guys know I'm constantly changing my collection, but for the most part, this is what your Judgment Day figures look like. And she fits right in. I think this looks good. We know in Elite 112, we are getting our JD McDouble figure. When we get that JD McChicken, it should fit in really nicely to the collection as well. But until that day, this is what we have so far for our Judgment Days. And I know a lot of people want a black attire or a more purple attire, but I love the white. And I think that that ultimate Edition is really what's going to throw that over the top. But if they're making Ultimate Edition Damian Priest, Ultimate Edition Dominic, I would assume that Ultimate Edition Finn Balor and Ultimate Edition Rhea Ripley would be coming right around the corner, hopefully. But but I do have one more comparison for our Judgment Day figures, and I want to spread these out so we can put the last piece of the puzzle right into the middle, and that is going to be the Elite 103 Liv Morgan figure, because I'm sure that when Mommy returns, she's going to beat the blue hell out of Liv Morgan, and we'll have to see about that. But until Rhea Ripley returns. 
this is what we have so far for our collections. And then we have Pete Dunn's accessories, which look pretty good. No championship, unfortunately, like the other three figures we've taken a look at, but we do have some quality going on. And one thing I think Mattel has done is they have kind of entered into their prime era for cloth goods. I think it took them a while to figure it out, but I think they have really figured it out. I think that they said something about the Mattel team starting to work with the Barbie team in-house. That really helps with their cloth goods quality and the way they make their designs and clothes. And I think it's paid off because... And I don't know if, you know, we have figures in the line that have done that yet, but I think that these look really good. You do have the Velcro on the back. You have the collar in there, which is kind of how, you know, cricket jerseys work or whatever, which is what this is supposed to be, I do presume. You have the navy collar with the red accents. And I wish it kind of fit the figure tighter, you know, when you wear these types of shirts. You know, you want to fill out the biceps. But I don't have a huge issue with it. I don't think I'm going to really display it like this. But it is still cool. I like to see it. You have the Fight Night. You have the Brawling Brutes logo. You got the B in there. And then you do have the side panels and whatnot. I think it probably would have fit better if it was that stretchy velcro list material. It would probably give you that, you know, one-of-one -one fit with the tight biceps, but I still think this looks really good, and I'm excited to have, you know, this style shirt in here. Very cool accessory there, and this figure actually includes two first time in the lines in terms of accessories because we do have this cricket bat. Now, mine is a bit warped out of the packaging. You'll notice that it's got a little bit of a lift in there, and that eh, that's kind of shishy. I really, I don't think breaking it away, making it break away, I don't think it was necessary, but it does break away for you to, you know, hit somebody with it and it, you know, pop off or whatever, or break apart, which is cool. But the handle looks good with the tape. I think this, the handle down here is supposed to be the same color as this, but I could be wrong. But we do have the Cricut bat, which I think is cool. I've, I've tried to flex this back into position. I think I'm going to have to hit it with a hairdryer to fix that warpage, but it's not the biggest deal. But it is cool to have a Cricut bat included in the line. I always appreciate, you know, brand new accessories added in here. And then for your Pete Dunn hands, you do get the mic holding or weapon wielding hands. And if you're a Pete Dunn fan, you know as well as I do, you got to have two fists just like Rhea Ripley you got to beat the hell out of people they are the brawling brutes in fact and Pete Dunne has always loved to fight and he used to have one of the hardest themes in WWE history just such a banger but he comes with fists to beat the hell out of people and getting into Pete Dunne starting out the head sculpt very good head sculpt right here I wish that he was making a snarling face but I will take a straight face over some goofy expression for sure but pete dunn's hair is way grown out here it goes all the way down to past the titties so that's interesting he does have his beard in there good gradient fade on the side of his head skull how come he gets a graded faded beard right there what's up with that look at that that looks way better than roman reigns dang look at that it looks nice. But he does have the white or the red, white, and blue gear, which I think looks good. The Brawling Brutes gear. The white gear is a very interesting choice. Not something I would have expected. I definitely want to track down the chase in the green gear. But until then, we do have the red, white, and blue gear with the Pete Dunn torso. It looks to be the same torso we got on his last two elites. But he does have double jointed and white wrist tape on here, which is very nice. Very clean paint apps on here. I'm not noticing any schmutz or anything, which is good. But one thing that I like about this figure is it has a brand new leg mold or a brand new look for Pete Dunn on his his last two figures he had the Daniel Bryan legs which are way too small on these new legs I am noticing this gapping here but be careful he isn't on ball joints but he does pose around really nice but when you go up like this be careful if you're doing like a split pose I honestly would just avoid it because my leg almost got stuck in that pose and then trying to bend it back down it almost snapped so just be very careful when you're doing that but he does have his knee tattoo in there no knee pads but very buttery smooth pinless joints here I'm not getting any super tightness they're a little tight, but I think with a little bit of articulation, he'll be fine. And then he does have these nice kick pads in here. Very nice colors here. You have the white, the red, the blue, which looks just very clean. I love this attire. Great attire right there, man. But in terms of posing around, the Pete Dunn does feel good. He His ab crunch and ab crunch back is not the greatest of all time there, but buttery smooth everywhere else I'm finding. He can kick forward really well, so that's nice. But he is not on ball joints. It, it looks like he's on ball joints, but he's not, so you want to be very careful there. I don't even want to do the splits because my leg got stuck almost, so I, I really don't want to do that. But he does have thigh swivel. You can just see that gap there. I need to shove that up in there. I don't know if hitting that with heat or whatever would do good, but like I said, the double jointed knee is good, and then you do have the kick pad rotation, a little bit of ankle rocker there. It's definitely, I would say, probably more poseable than its last few figures, but I am really liking the posability of this Pete Dunn, but let's get into some Pete Dunn figure comparisons. And for your Pete Dunn figure comparisons, we do have the Elite 64 Collector's Edition on the left, and we do have the Elite 75 on the right. Been a long time since we've gotten Pete Dunn here, and it looks like they are using a better or more accurate skin tone, and it looks good. I like it. 
I think that all three of these are good Pete Dunne figures. The Elite 75 was my least favorite. I really loved the Collector's Edition, though. I know it's kind of outdated now, but still just money Pete Dunne. I like the head sculpt. I think the head sculpt still holds up to this day, to be honest with you, so there's that. But there's your Pete Dunne figure comparisons. And then for your Brawling Brutes figure comparisons, here we have Seamus and Ridge Holland to complete the faction. And if you have all these in their gear, I don't feel like the Butch of this era really fits in with these guys. But it's still, you know, if you want to pose these together, this would probably be the best thing. You know, when Butch or Pete Dunne was running around in this specific look, I feel like he looked completely different, right? He had like the checkerboard pants and the suspenders and all that different stuff, but still can fit in with these guys. But then for your most recent look of Pete Dunne, we do have him here with my fix-up custom Tyler Bate. And I did use an Elia Dragunov figure for this Tyler Bate with a custom R3 Jax Billy Gunhead sculpt. I don't know how the hell we don't have an updated Tyler Bate. Honestly, sickening. I, I really don't know what the hell's going on. We haven't had one in years and the first one was terrible. It looked nothing like him. So hopefully the second go around, they'll use the Ilya Dragunov base and they'll make him look really, really good. So hopefully that will be announced at Comic-Con. I'm hoping for a new Tyler Bate to be announced at Comic-Con. It's going to be one of my top wants for San Diego Comic-Con. Damn, I'm getting hyped for San Diego Comic-Con. I feel like Comic-Con was yesterday and now we're getting ready to go again next month. Should be a fun one, but we do have Pete Dunne and, and Tyler Bate right here to represent more of a more modern Pete Dunne if you want to put that with any sort of Tyler Bate figure in your collection. But I think that about wraps up our WWE Elite 110 two-in-one review of Rhea Ripley and Pete Dunn, man. Really like both of these figures a hell of a lot. I think both of them are going to come really high up in our WWE Elites of the Year. And one Elite 110 has been a very strong wave so far. I've enjoyed every figure that we have reviewed so far. And every single figure that I've reviewed so far, I think is worth the pickup. Now, if you are a big Pete Dunn fan, this is a great update to Pete Dunn. I know that it says Butch. I know that he's wearing Brawling Brutes gear, whatever. I still think as a Pete Dunn figure, this works fantastic. We finally have up updates to our Pete Dunne, and I like that they upgraded the legs. You know, Pete Dunne has pretty swole legs. I think the upgrade there is nice. The attire is nice. We get some new things going on here with the colored jersey or shirt. You do have the cricket bat, which I think is really awesome as well. Good head sculpt. Just a really good Pete Dunne figure overall. I have no real gripes about the Pete Dunne. Besides that small gap that you get in the legs for whatever reason, and it has kind of closed over the entire review as we've went on, so I don't know what's going on there. If you get it out of the packaging, maybe if you shove it up in there a little bit, it should fix it. But then the Rhea Ripley is damn good. It's the best Rhea Ripley figure that's ever existed. I love the upgrade to the arms. I love the upgrade to her overall stature. And that is something that I complained a lot about with the first go around or the second go around. The Elite 84 Rhea Ripley was good and then the Elite 102 Rhea Ripley was just terrible. I thought that the attire selection was terrible. This attire is much better. You guys know I love a white gear like I said. I do wish that I had the sternum tattoo but I guess I'll have to wait on the Ultimate. Hopefully the Ultimate Edition will have all of her tattoos on there. That's what I've been waiting on. But I like this new head sculpt. I like the details and the sculpts on the gear. The all-white gear, like I said, is fresh. But I think the overall upgrade to the formula and the upgrade to her stature, like I said, the musculature, it just looks so much better and more accurate to Rhea Ripley that it stands out, man. It's just such a nice figure. So good. And I've had a lot of fun posing the figure around, putting it in the arena, all those different things, man. This is easily the best Rhea Ripley figure to date. And I would highly recommend picking up both of these figures, man. If you want to do so, you can go over to Ringside Collectibles. Use promo code MD Toy Save yourselves 10%, man. These are easily worth the pickup. I don't even have a, a single... I don't really have any gripes about the two. I think that maybe the head sculpt on Rhea could be better if I'm trying to you know, find some certain gripes. And then, yeah, I do have that chipping white paint on the shin, but I don't really, I could hit that with some white paint. Not the biggest deal there, but I have no real gripes with these figures. They feel really good in hand. They pose around nice, and I think you should absolutely grab them, man. So that will be my opinions on these two figures moving forward. But Elite 110 has been damn good so far. I've been enjoying them, and if you guys want to, definitely go over there and grab these, man. But that is pretty much going to wrap the review up. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Hope you guys did enjoy. I'd love to know your thoughts on these down in the comment section below. Also, on Sunday, I am doing a whatnot stream, man. I'm doing a whatnot stream. Go click the link in the description below. We are going to be doing a whatnot stream on Sunday. Going to be selling off some really cool customs. Going to be selling off some parts of my collection and just some really wild things. Every time we go to, if you've been to a whatnot stream here on the channel, it is over on whatnot. You do have to go download the app, but if you've been to a whatnot stream, it's always random. There's always chaos. We have crazy surprises and mystery items. It's always a lot of fun. So if you guys, if that sounds like something you want to get into, man, I would greatly appreciate it. You get $15 off your first purchase if you've never done so. So go ahead and cash in your money in the bank briefcase right there, man. But I'm getting out of here. Huge shout out to our Patreon members, man. Thank you guys so very much for your continued support. You guys are incredible. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Thank you guys so very much for the continued support as always. But I'm getting the hell out of here, man. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at MyDamnToys. I'll see you guys in the next time. Have a blessed one, and I'll catch you guys later.